Hello, welcome. I am by name Samuel Babatunde, and this is basic science class. This is basic science class, and today we're going to be talking about nutrition. So today we'll be discussing nutrition. I know most of you have heard of the word nutrition. You know what nutrition means. But today we'll be looking into details what nutrition is all about. What nutrition is all about. And remember in our previous classes, we talked about, that's our first class in basic science, we talked about the introduction to science, we saw how important science is to us, and then also we discussed about what um, um, family health. We saw family health, how it is very important for us to keep ourselves clean, how it is very important for us to keep our family clean. And we say that for family health to be complete, for a total complete for family health, each individual, that's every individual in the family, that's the parents, the children, that's the, the parents, I mean the father, the mother, and the children must take care of themselves for them to have a what, complete family health. And then we look at personal hygiene, that's personal cleanliness. Then we look at ways to maintain personal cleanliness, that's cleanliness of the skin, cleanliness of the seats, and cleanliness of the hair. Okay, so today we'll be moving forward to nutrition. So we're going to be looking at nutrition. We feed daily. There's no day we, we don't eat. Food is a necessity for us to survive. So each and every one of us eats daily. Now we need to know and understand that it is not just by eating. We need to know what to eat and the right amount of food to eat to avoid, to avoid overfeeding. So in this course or in this lesson, we'll, need, we'll see the meaning of nutrition and how we can what, apply nutrition in our daily life. So we'll, do, we'll discuss in details nutrition today. Now, nutrition, we see what nutrition are the food substances that we take. These are the food substances that we take. Like I said, we eat daily. We eat what? Food daily. Be it rice, be it beans, be it yam, even your favorite meal. I might not mention your favorite food. But we eat daily. These food substances that we eat what, are made of they are what we call what nutrition. And say and comprises of the six classes of food. Nutrition are the food substances that we take and comprises of the six classes of food. Food is important because it provides you with energy to move. Yes. We don't just eat. If you notice, we don't just eat. Now, okay, I would like you to try it one day. Just try and not to eat like maybe for when you wake up in the morning, don't eat for maybe the first six hours of the day. You notice that your energy will be reduced. You have what limited energy. Even moving will take you what extra energy. Moving that you do like willingly and before. That you just stand up and then you find yourself moving. But you need to put in more effort to move. Why? Because what there is no food. So food is very important. Food is, an, is a very, very important aspect of our life. It provides us with the energy to move. Even to think, sometimes when you want to read, if you've not eaten, the reading words will look impossible. Because what the fuel that will move you to read, the fuel that will give you the strength, the energy to think is not there. You know, thinking is a brain work. And this brain, you see, requires a lot of nutrients for it to function. So without this food, it will be very, very hard for you to think when you're reading. Because when you're reading, you need to think about it, what the book is saying. You need to re relate many things together. You need to bring to, um, physical actions, like things that relate to what you're reading. So you need to think deeply. But without food, you notice that your thinking will be, what, will be impaired. Like you won't have a proper thinking. This is because what, food is very, very important. The brain requires what, nutrients. And this food what, gives us the right nutrients at which we use what, to think. And it says, and to do everything you do every day, yes. Each and every one of us has our own day-to-day -day activities. I have my own day-to-day -day activities. Waking up, um, my morning chores, I take my bath, eat my food, I go to work. You also have your own day-to-day -day activities. So it is this food that we eat that gives us the energy to do what? To do our day-to-day -day activities, to do everything we do every day. Most of us play around, we run, we play with our friends. It's this food that we eat that gives us what? That gives us this energy to do all these things. So food is what is very, very important. It is necessary for growth, yes. Without growth, without food, growth will be impaired without food. Food is necessary for growth. I'm very sure 
while your parents give up to you, you're very small, you're not as big as this. But what, when your parents start feeding you, the first um, food you take was the breast milk. You begin to grow. Then the food advance. As you're growing your food advance, as you're growing your food advance, and the more you eat, the more you grow. The more you eat, the more you grow. Body cells begin to what? They begin to replicate. You begin to add weight. You begin to add height. All these are because what? Are because of food. It is because you eat that you're able to what? Achieve such growth. If you notice, if you look at children who are suffering from what? From poor, poor feeding that do not eat regularly, you notice that what? They have retarded growth. Some of them are either short, some are very slim. The body did not have the right nutrients for growth. So what? Nutrition is very, very important. And that is why we're studying nutrition in basic science because what it talks about the food substances that we need to take the food substances that is very important that gives you energy that gives you energy to move to think to do your day-to-day -day activities and what most importantly that's very very necessary for what for growth now we'll be looking at what the classes of food the classes of food nutrients classes of food nutrients i say nutrients are chemicals are chemical substances found in food yes each food you take contains what one nutrient or the other. Each food you take, each food you take, be it egg, be it beans, be it rice. You notice that they are but there are particular nutrients that you find in this food. And these nutrients are what? They are the chemical substance found in food. It is this nutrient that the body needs. The food you are taking, what the body needs from this food is this nutrient. Because it's this nutrient that is required for the proper functioning and maintenance of your body. It is this nutrient present in the food that your brain requires what to do its day-to-day -day activities. Remember, everything going on in your body is controlled by the brain. And so the brain requires nutrients what, for it to carry out its activities effectively. So nutrients are chemical substances found in food which are needed for growth and make one alive. I say there are five main classes of food. Yes, I know we know this. But I'm trying to remind us that what there are five main classes of food, and these are the carbohydrates, the protein, the fats and oil, mineral salts, vitamins. Carbohydrates, protein, fats and oil, mineral salts and vitamins. These are the what these are the main five classes of food, and then you include water. Not that water is not important. Water is very, very important. But when you talk about the five main classes of food, they are the carbohydrates, the protein, the fats and oil, the mineral salts, and vitamins, and then water. So briefly, we'll be looking at these what classes of food individually. We'll be looking at the classes of food individually, what they are for, the examples, and why we take these classes of food. Why is it important that we consume these classes of food? These classes of food are not just dear. They have their own words, respective functions in the body. The nutrients they give has a specific functions. It has a specific purpose in the body. So the first class of food we're going to be seeing or we're going to be um, considering is what? The carbohydrates. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates is like, I think carbohydrates is the main, like one of the main food that Africans consume. Africans consume more of carbohydrates daily. We consume more of carbohydrate daily. Now, carbohydrates are energy what's giving food, yes. They are the energy giving food. These are food that provides us what with energy. The main source of energy comes from carbohydrates. So when you hear of energy giving food, when you hear of energy giving food, they are what? Carbohydrates. Anywhere you hear of energy giving food, the first thing that should come to your mind are what? Carbohydrates. They are the energy giving food. An example of these carbohydrates, like I told you, we consume carbohydrates every day. There's no day that passes that we don't consume carbohydrates. So an examples of carbohydrates are the yam, the cassava, the rice, the bread, corn, etc. Many more. All these are what examples of carbohydrates. When you eat them, you get energy from them. They give you what energy. They give you energy. Another um, class of food that we need to consider, which is very, very important, is what protein. Protein. Protein are also called what the body building foods. Proteins are the body building food. Proteins are the body building food because they help our body parts to grow as well as repair injured or damaged parts. Yes. Proteins are body building food. It is proteins that enable us what that enable our body to repair what's worn out tissues. You find out that when you injure yourself and maybe um, your skin is scraped off or maybe you, you have um, muscle tear. After some time, well, after, after some days, you discover that what, this um, injury begins to cover or begins to close. 
it is the work of protein. These proteins you consume alone are enable the body to repair its damaged tissues. The worn out tissues in your body are being repaired as a result of the nutrients gotten from this protein, proteinous food. So protein are body building food. They help to build your body. The muscles are what typical example of protein. And that is why you see when you consume meats, meats either from, um, from the cow or from the goats, you see what that you, you, you are taking in protein because this body, it is, um, the muscles in your body you're saying, these body muscles are actually what typical example of protein. So imagine you don't consume um, protein. Your muscles in your body what, will, be, will be underdeveloped. They won't be well developed. So proteins are what body building food. They help to build your body. They help to repair worn out tissues, damaged tissues in the body. Proteins help to what? To repair all this. Now examples of protein include the beans, the milk, the fish, the meats, soya beans and granules. All these are what? Examples of protein. So examples of protein include what? Again, what's, I'll go over it again. The beans, the milk, the fish, the meats, soya beans and granules. So now we're moving on to the next class of food, which is what? The fats and oil. Fats and oil. Fats and oil, we said what? They are also energy giving food. Remember when we talked about um, carbohydrates, we say carbohydrates are energy giving food. In fact, like they're the main source of energy because we consume them daily. But now also fat and oil are also energy giving food. But the difference is, is that, the difference, main difference is that in terms of carbohydrates now, you can cons you consume carbohydrates every day, like largely most of our food is carbohydrates because what, it has no like negative effects on us, unlike fat and oil. Fat and oil now gives us energy, but then this fat and oil cannot be consumed in such manner as we consume what carbohydrates. Why? Because when we consume this fat and oil too much, they, they are stored in the body as what fat deposits. They are stored in the body as fat deposits, as droplets of fats. And this fat deposit now so might enter into the what into the blood vessels. They go into the blood vessels, and as they flow into the blood vessels, what happens? They begin to block the arteries in the body. These vessels now that have to carry blood, they have to channel blood in the body to different organs in the body. This fat droplet begins to block them. And now when this blood, um, when this blood flow is being obstructed, what do you think will happen? The organs now will become what? Will, not be, will become malnourished, like the blood will not get to the respective organ. Let me give you an instance. Like the liver. When blood flow to the liver now is being altered, what happens? The function of the liver will be, what, will be impaired and this will lead to what, liver damage. So that is why you can't consume fat and oil the much way you consume what, carbohydrates because what, so much consumption or over consumption of fat and oil will lead to what, deposits of these fats in the body. And it can lead to what, high blood pressure, it can lead to stroke in older people or even death, yes. Because take for instance now, the, um, the blood vessels that goes to the heart, if this um, fat droplet or this fat deposit now goes into the blood vessels that channels blood to the heart and blocks this um, blood vessel to the heart, now blood will not be able to get to the heart. The oxygen that the blood is carrying to the heart and the nutrient will not get to the heart. And what happens? The heart will stop beating. And once this heart stops beating, what will happen? Death. Because once the heart stops beating, that is final. Death is certain. So fat and oil are good, yes. They provide us energy. The energy contained in fat and oil itself is even more than the energy contained in carbohydrates. But then you can't consume fat and oil much way you consume what? You consume carbohydrates. You can't consume them the same way you consume carbohydrates. So examples of foods that gives that contains fats and, and oil include the margarine. Margarine, you can also put butter, yes. Margarine, butter, coconut oil, palm oil, granite oil, and so on. So these are examples of food that will give you what fats and oil. Mind me, fats and oil is important, yes. I don't say it's not important, it's important. It's a class of food, but then to the, too much consumption, consumption of this fat and oil is not good. And that is why you have to limit the way you consume what fat and oil because overconsumption of fat and oil is dangerous to the health. Now, another class of food they're going to be looking at is what vitamins. Vitamins are very, very important. They are very, very important. In fact, vitamins is very important in all the activities that occur in the human body. Every activity, every reaction, every chemical reaction occurring in the human body, vitamins play a vital role. 
even your everything you do, your vision, in your vision, in your thinking, even in everything you do, vitamins are very important. You have vitamin A, you have vitamin B, you have vitamin C, you have vitamin D. All these have their words, specific function. For the purpose of this class, I won't be listing or telling you about this and vitamins because what it is above your level. When you get to your senior secondary school, you'll be told or taught more about what the various vitamins, that's vitamin A, B, and C. But we just here we're just going to be looking at what this vitamin actually means. So these vitamins are food, mainly found in what fruits, yes. You find them mainly in fruits, fruits like what? Like your mangoes, your oranges, your purple, pineapple. That's where you get what, that's where you find these vitamins. Also, you find them in green leafy vegetables, yes. Your vegetables, vegetables like spinach, your vegetables like um spinach, yes. You get them from pumpkin. You get um, vitamins from all these what vegetables. Also, you get them from okra, tomatoes, and even egg, yes. You get vitamins from all this. So vitamin is another what class of food that is very, very important. It's very, very important for the normal function of the body. In fact, most enzymes that, that work in the body, the enzymes that helps to what, that helps to carry out the basic chemical reaction in the body, the enzymes that catalyzes the chemical reaction in the body requires vitamins what, to function. They require vitamins to function. Because by, that's, what, that's why vitamin has to be included in the classes of food. And it's very, very important for our day-to-day -day activities. Now, we move on to the next class of food, which is what? Mineral salts. Mineral salt is another class of food. We say these are needed in very small quantity. You see, they are needed in very small quantity, but are very important in keeping our organs functioning properly. Yes, mineral salts. Salt like sodium, like magnesium, like chloride. They are very important for, what, for the organ to function properly. But then you don't need them in large quantity. No, you need them in what? In small quantity. In small quantity. For example, now see your table salt, which is sodium chloride. You can get sodium and chloride from your table salt. Now, the essence of this um, mineral salt, like sodium and chloride, is for the proper function of your organ. I'll give you an instance. Take for instance, now see your kidney. The kidney requires what? This sodium requires potassium for it to what, carry out its activities because the kidney has to work with the, what, with the percentage, with the amount of sodium and potassium in the body for it to maintain the constant internal environment in the body. Now imagine there's, there's, um, there's a problem with your sodium or potassium level in the body. What do you think will happen? There will be an impairment in the functioning of the kidney. So that is why these mineral salts are important. So this, this, this um, mineral salt mustn't be too high and they mustn't be too low. So they have to be in what? in a constant amount that's a very very what regulated amount and they are very very important for the functioning of the organ in the body now another um class of food is water 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 is everywhere water is very very important like it is important we take it water after we eat you see, it is important to take water with our foods and even at other times. Yes, you don't only take water when you eat. Sometimes when you feel thirsty, you take water. Sometimes even when you're hungry and there's no food available for you to eat, what do you eat? You take water to what to sustain you. Some enzymes in the body require what water to function. Like water is like it's a universal solvent, like a universal solvent. Water provides the room, it provides the space, it provides it provides the the room for every enzyme in the body to function every functioning in the body every chemical chemical reaction in the body water like provides a space for them to function you see enzymes that digest our food requires water to function properly yes when you consume food for the food to be broken down into what into their smaller or respective what nutrients they require water for these processes because the enzyme that will break this um, food down requires water for instance in the stomach some enzymes in the stomach now that helps to break down proteinous food, they require what water to function. Likewise, when you get to the jodonum, that's a small intestine. The enzymes that need to break down food into their respective what nutrients requires what water to function. So water is like it's very important. And if you know, notice the body is made up of like over seventy percent of water, because if you look at your blood, your blood is in liquid form. It's made up of what water. You find water in your blood. So the body is like made up of over 70% of water. Water is very, very important in our functioning. 
because if if you have if there is a decrease in water consumption, now it affects the volume of your blood, and when it's a decreased blood volume, what will happen? There will be decreased blood supply to our various organs, and when these organs now have limited blood supply, what happens? Their function begins to they begin to decrease in functions, and when they decrease in function, you notice that the individual will not be able to grow well. So water is very very what important, very very important. Now that is all on the classes of food. Now briefly we'll be looking at the balanced diet. We'll be looking briefly at what balanced diet. Now what is balanced diet? I believe we'll be hearing of balanced diet. Balanced diet simply means what the meal that contains all the classes of food, all these classes of food I've mentioned earlier on. That's the carbohydrates, the protein, the mineral salts, the vitamins, the fat and oil and water. A meal that contains all these classes of food that the body needs. Now, not just containing these classes of food, also in the right what, in the right amount. So balanced diet is that meal that contains all the classes of food the body needs for its normal functioning, for its normal growth, in the right amount. Remember, I was telling you, fat and oil, you don't need it excessively. So in the right amount, mineral salt, you need them in what small quantity in the right amount. So balanced diet is not just about the meal that contains the entire classes of food. No, but what in the right amount. You don't just stand up today and say, okay, throughout today I want to consume um, carbohydrates. No, that is not the right amount. Or you wake up and say, throughout today I'm consuming proteins alone. What happens to the, um, to the carbohydrates? What happens to the fat and oil? What happens to the minerals? Because when all these things are lacking in the body, the body will not be able to function properly. So balanced diet must, is a meal that must contain there were the six classes of food in the right proportion, in the right amount. Let me give you a good example of balanced diet. A good example of balanced diet now is what? Your bread, egg, and tea in the morning. Now, your bread is the carbohydrates. Your bread is what? Is the carbohydrates. Now, the egg, when you fry this egg now, what do you use to fry the egg? You use granite oil to fry the egg. And this granite oil is what? The granite oil is fat and oil. Even the egg itself is fat and oil. And the egg also is a source of protein. It's a very good source of protein. Now you see, you've got in your what? You've got in your carbohydrates, you've got in your fat and oil, and you've got in your what? You've got in your protein. Now also in this egg, you have some minerals. Likewise in your bread, like the sodium, the chloride. So all this gives you what? Mineral source. Even your vitamins, you get them from this. You can get vitamins from egg. And then your tea, which you made with water, is water. So you see that's a typical example of what? Balanced diet. So balanced diet is a meal that contains all these classes of food that the body needs to grow in the right amount. Never too much and not too little. You see it? Never too much or too little in the right amount. So with this, we've come to the end of today's lesson on nutrition. We've come to the end of today's lesson on nutrition. And here is a brief assignment for you. The assignment says, mention three examples each of the following classes of food. Now you have to give me three examples each of the following classes of food, which is carbohydrates, protein, fats, and oil. So what you're going to be doing is that you're going to do this exam, this um, assignment for carbohydrates. You mention three examples for protein. You give me three examples, and for fats and oil, you give me what three examples each. So before we go, I would like to do a recap of what we discussed. I started with the definition of nutrition, and I said nutrition are the food substances that we take and comprises of the six classes of food. And we say food is very important because it provides us the energy to move, to do our day-to-day -day activities, and even to think as a human being, because all we do today is actually controlled by the brain. And the brain requires what's nutrients for its proper functioning. And we say it is very necessary for growth. Food is very necessary for growth. Now, classes of food, we talk about the classes of food. We say there are five main classes of food and then it with plus water. And this means five classes of food are the carbohydrates, the protein, the fat and oil, the mineral salts, and the vitamin. And then we talk about the carbohydrates, we say that the energy giving food. Examples of the bread, the yam, the cassava. Talk about protein, say protein are the, the basic, like the body building food. They help to repair one our tissues. They don't enable us to grow. They help us to build our body, our body mass. The muscles in our body are made up of what proteins. Example, talk about the granules. The soya beans, the meats, the fish, the milk. 
Then also we look at what fat and oil. And I told you fat and oil are also what energy giving food. But then you can't compare fat and oil to what carbohydrate because what excess fat and oil in the body is not good as it can lead to what it can lead to damage of organs and it can lead to death. An example, we say the coconut oil, the palm oil, the margarine, the butter. And then we talk about vitamins. I say vitamins is very necessary for what for every chemical reaction that occurs in the body. And we can get them from what? From leafy vegetables like okra. we get all them from okra, from tomatoes fruits like mangoes and oranges and we talk about mineral salts also example like the sodium and the magnesium and we say these mineral salts are very very important for the functioning of our organs for our organs to function properly example of the organs are like our heart our liver the kidney our intestines the stomach for them to function properly they need what they require this mineral salt and then water we say what the importance of water can never be overemphasized water is very important for the what for the normal functioning for the normal reactions that occur in the body because the enzymes that help to break down our food in the body actually requires what water to function so the importance of water can never be overemphasized at all and then we talk about the balanced diet that it is the food that contains all the six classes of food in the right proportion in the right amount take notes the six classes of food in the right what, proportion the right amount never too much never too little never too much never too little and then i give you an assignment that i should write three examples each of the following classes of food the carbohydrates the protein and fats and oil so with this we've come to the end of today's class if you remain samuel babatunde please ensure you follow us on our zoom classes and if you're watching this on youtube ensure you subscribe to get more of our of our videos thank you and god bless you